So in yesterday's video, I asked you guys if you wanted to see the 17 stocks that I have on my buying watch list. And I definitely got a lot of comments that you guys wanted to see these 17 stocks that are on my buying watch list. So I'm going to go ahead in today's video and share all 17 stocks with you guys here today and just talk for a quick moment about each of the stocks and why they're on my buying watch list. And then what we're going to do after that is I'm going to order them and put them in, in my opinion, like order of importance of which ones I am like really aggressively buying, which ones are a little bit more on the back burner that maybe I'm waiting for to come down a little bit in this video here today. Okay. I feel like a little bit of a guy at a buffet right now. I feel like there's a lot of deals out there. I feel like there's a lot of attractive stocks. You just got to know where to look in this market. Hope you guys enjoy this video here today. Appreciate y'all joining me. Hope you get a lot of value out of it. I'm, I'm going to enjoy sharing these 17 stocks with you guys in this one. Got a lot to go through. All I ask in return smash that like button and you may want to make sure you subscribe to the channel we are at a new all-time high subscribers in the history of this youtube channel it's a very large number and so i appreciate each and every one of you that are here day in and day out also if you're looking to take your game up to the next level you can check out the pin comment down there click on that fill out an application and join my private group we do things like portfolio management in there, valuations qualitative research quantitative research we go over financials we you know, teach you all the stuff that you need to know so you can make uh, wise investment decisions out there in the world for yourself. Okay. That's pinned comment down there. Alrighty guys. Plus you get access to six and seven figure discord chat and a lot more. First, one of these 17 stocks up here is Shopify. This stock is about 62 bucks here today. It's a growth beast of a company. I love this one. Forward P looks high on it, right? It trades a lot richer than an average stock in the market. But the thing with Shopify is it's no average stock in the market. This is a company that has exponentially more growth year in and year out than an average stock in the market, right? You can see this kind of in the expected growth rates for Shopify moving forward. We're looking at 20%-ish type growth rates for Shopify moving forward. The, I mean, Shopify is a type of company that I expect to grow 20% a year in kind of, you know, let's call it shakier economic times in a company that I expect to grow kind of in the 25 to 35% range in stronger economic times. So this is a company that is also at infant stage of profitability. The, the profits Shopify is making today are very, very minuscule compared to where this company is going to be five years out, 10 years out, 15 years out. And there are very few companies you ever get to buy in the market that you can just feel like you're going to buy that stock and the company has so much growth over the next 10, 20 years that you don't even have to worry about like when's the growth going to end because it's so long away. It's exactly how I feel in regards to Shopify. It's one of those stocks you can buy and buy and buy. No different than if you've been buying Amazon for the last 20 years. You know, so many growth opportunities at Amazon and Shopify is that sort of company. Just growth levers all over the company. The company's going to grow and grow and grow for a long time to go in the future. Number two of these 17 stocks is... Fubo. This is arguably the most dangerous stock of the entire list. This is a stock that is a $0 stock or 10x. It's a stock that's a little over a dollar a share right now. And, you know, basically if this company can make it through this next 12 to 18 months, likely the opportunity in the stock is like a 10x type opportunity. It is absolutely massive. And, uh, if they can't make it through the next 12 to 18 months, then it's going to zero. So this is a little bit of a lottery ticket stock. And when you get down to a dollar, you know, you're basically a lottery ticket stock. The exciting thing for Fubo is they could actually start getting to some profitable quarters next year, right? So they got to get through this year, which is kind of a tough year for them overall on the financial side. But as long as they get through this year, get out to next year, then we could be talking about some slight profits and maybe some quarters. And then we could talk about building on that in 2026. The revenue growth and the subscriber growth on Fubo has been absolutely phenomenal. Very high risk, very high reward stock. So don't be surprised if you see Fubo stock you know, uh, let's call it 18 months from now, <laughs> delist it, or you see Fubo stock 18 months from now, and it's $15 a share, and it's a dollar today. So do not be surprised at either of those situations. Uber stock, so Uber booba number three of these 17 stocks here, Uber is very early profit days. This is a $66 stock here today. Once again, a stock that looks like it's trading rich, you know, roughly 2x or a little over 2x, the forward P versus kind of where the market trades out or most stocks in the market trade at, right? But Uber, I mean, go back a couple of years ago, this was a company that lost fortunes of money on their bottom line. They were the furthest thing from profitable. 
And now, guess what? They're actually starting to become a profitable company, which is very exciting because that means the the curve, the curve when you start reaching, is very important everybody understands this. Usually when a company just starts to reach profitability, the curve is like exponential in terms of that next like three to five years on how fast that growth rate of EPS is over the next three to five years. And so Uber is about to go through or just start and go through this kind of exponential rise in terms of their earnings per share, which is very, very exciting, right? Obviously, Uber has several growth areas for their business overall, right? Now, if we look at the revenue growth rates expected, you know, we can call it mid to high teens is kind of what's expected here for Uber's revenue growth rates. And then their earnings per share growth should outstrip that revenue growth quite considerably. And I, I think that will probably go on for several years to go in the future. So I like where Uber's position. It's a very interesting stock for me. Number four of these 17 stocks is PayPal. So if you know me, you know I love PayPal stock. Yes, I do. They own PayPal. They own Venmo. They also own Braintree. Braintree, I mean, PayPal, Venmo, if you're watching this right now, probably know both of those services because they're so famous, such famous apps in the fintech space. Braintree runs a lot of the backside of transactions and things like that for big companies. So that's a huge growth opportunity for the company over these coming years, along with obviously PayPal and Venmo. Alex Chris has a company heading the right direction. They literally have a, a gentleman coming in next week to start running the investor relations page who's done a phenomenal job in his past, and I think that's going to help out the stock price immensely over this next 12 to 24 months, and I'm talking in a significant way. Stock price is $63 here today. Forward P of 12, that's basically where like non-growth type banks trade at, traditional banks. It's insane. And so it's a broken stock. It's not a broken company. And it will not stay a broken stock, in my personal opinion. Decent revenue growth on this one. Is it the most exciting? Is it a Shopify? No. Is it a Fubo? No. But consistent, growing company, great profits, great EPS to growth expected for this company. It's another company I expect the earnings per share to go up more rapidly than the revenues. And so I love it. Love it. Love it. Number five of 17 is Tesla Maesla, $174 stock here today. It's been a brutal past three years for Tesla. It's been an unbelievably great past five years for Tesla. Now, when it comes to Tesla, here's the deal with Tesla, okay? I understand this year, you know, if they even grow revenue, it's going to be a very small amount, right? I understand that. But you got to look a little past this year. I do not expect this year to be lasting. I do expect the EV trend to get bigger and bigger. I do believe that long-term EVs are the future. And I do believe that the robo-taxi opportunity is the future. Self-driving vehicles are the future. And who's the leader in all those areas? In my opinion, it's Tesla. They're the real leader in true FSD, not these, you know, trying to use LiDAR systems. And, and I've seen a lot of these videos of these LiDAR systems. I just watched a video earlier today and went viral. It was either on X or it was on Instagram. <laughs> this vehicle was literally driving the wrong side of the road. It was like one of those LiDAR, I don't know if it was Waymo or, or one of those other ones, right? Literally not even driving <laughs> on the right side of the street. It was The car was so confused. So based upon what I see, Tesla's a true leader in like actual, like we're going to have the cars driving ourselves from what I've experienced with the full self-driving in both my Teslas. I also, I don't think it's even for debate that Tesla's a leader in EVs, right? They're the leader in EVs. So two mega trends there. The robo-taxi opportunity, obviously, if you're, whoever wins that, plus has manufacturing capabilities, should win overall that market, right? And so when you look out to those, it's like, oh my gosh, Tesla's leading everywhere. They're leading in the supercharger network opportunity. They're really leading with battery technology as well. I mean, they're leading everything across the board. So my opinion is, Tesla's growth rates this year, yeah, they're they're really sad for Tesla, but this is a short-term phenomenon, and I do believe next year and in following years, we'll see a much more substantial growth rate for Tesla on the top line and the bottom line. So that, that's Tesla. Number six of these 17 stocks is winning resorts. So winning resorts, first off, I'll call it losing resorts right now from the perspective of it doesn't matter how good their numbers are. It's hard to get the stock price up right now. The numbers are phenomenal from Win. You know, the growth rates are really, really good for Win. The numbers, you look at their latest quarterly numbers, great. Conference call, great. Vegas is great. Macau is getting better and better and better. But 
the big problem is, and they obviously have the project they're building in the Middle East right now. Oh my gosh, if the New York opportunity is going to be crazy if they get that opportunity, right? But the issue is no one wants to own these sorts of companies right now. Rates are high. They say, okay, big resort companies like this. Well, these sorts of companies, guess what? You got to take out a lot of debt usually. If you got to take out a lot of debt at these sorts of interest rates, it's no bueno. So a lot of people don't want to own wind for that reason. Then they say, okay, if the Fed starts lowering rates and if we start getting into a lower rate environment, oh, okay, that's good for wind in the sense of they can take out debt and, you know, have projects be funded with much cheaper debt than where it's at right now. But the fear is, okay, if the Fed's lowering rates, if rates are going down overall, that means what? Recession. And so recession is not going to be good for, for, you know, anybody in the travel sector, right? Because even if your business has hit 5 10%, it's still 5 or 10%, right? Wins customer base, very wealthy, mostly individuals, people that have good incomes, good net worths. But, you know, even in, in bad times, rich people still have money and they still will spend at win. But they might not spend as much. And win might lose some of the fringe customers, right? Which is maybe 5% or 10% but it's still five or 10%. So that's where win kind of is in a no win situation, no pun intended, in the short term. Eventually things will correct. Eventually we'll get into a much better environment and win will be a stalker, but it won't want a piece of. But for right now, it's just a great buying opportunity. So that's number six to 17. Number seven to 17 is a company that I have not bought yet, but man, I'm getting really close to this one. Zoom, yes, Zoom. It was a darling of Wall Street. Four years ago, right? Imagine the world four years ago. Zoom was like the center of the universe four years ago, right? We're in a very different world now. People have gone back to work. Zoom is still a great product. It is still a product that's used very often among business owners. But it's not the exciting story it once was, right? Now, the company's trading at a forward P of 12. It's got smaller revenue growth expected, but revenue growth nonetheless. Nice earnings per share growth expected. It's a solid, I think it's a solid value stock with maybe the hope long-term of becoming a growth stock again. But the great news is if I can get it at a 12 PE, even as a, as a nice value stock, I think it's a good opportunity just in case you know, if they ever hit that growth opportunity again, then we're talking about this is a game changing stock at that point in time. But even if it's not, I still think it's a money maker. They could easily start paying a dividend, right? Attract a dividend shareholder base. Good company. Next one up here. And by the way, Zoom's one of the very few companies you'll find where most of their income statements last few quarters have been like grade A income statements and grade A balance sheet. Really phenomenal. Next one up here, number eight is 17. This one is EA Sports. It's in the game. You know that one? Okay. EA. So EA, $125 stock here today. I've been doing some research on this one the, over the past 24 hours or so. And it's a company I'm already, you know, pretty familiar with, but just kind of like brushing up on them in the past 24 hours. And I had to add this one to my watch list uh, of potential buys. Forward P, I like it. It's trading under where a lot of stocks trade at in the market overall. I like the return on equity for this company. It has decent revenue growth, nothing crazy, kind of a single-digit revenue growth expectation. Earnings per share growth much more rapid because they've done some cost-cutting over the past year. That's really helping them out now. But with EA, they got a big new game that's coming here. First off, they have like a monopoly. They have like a monopoly on the sports game market for video games. Like literally they have all the licenses of pretty much all the major leagues you'd want to have. But they have a big game coming out in the fall time. Uh, and it's the first time this game's going to be out in like a decade or so. And it's NCAA football. And so that's going to be a new huge growth lever. And I think, my personal opinion is I think uh, a lot of analyst community in Wall Street, they're underestimating how big this game is going to be. Uh, I don't think they realize like how big of a deal that game used to be to folks. And the fact that it's finally coming back is going to be, I think, a kind of like a viral moment for sports-related games in, in a great moment for EA overall. I hope they come out with a great product because if they do that as well, uh, man, they're going to be looking really, really pretty. So EA, it's a company I'm looking seriously at and I might end up adding here, okay? Now, the service I've been showing you here today, this is what's called 1000xstocks.com, www.1000xstocks.com. It's a service I've been working on for quite a while behind the, in the background and uh, been putting together. And I just opened it up for people to start adding their names to the wait list and whatnot for this particular service. And uh, 
you know, I haven't even shown you the coolest thing in, in regards to Surface yet. It's this compare feature where I can compare three different companies all versus each other and see exactly where they're trading at for a ton of different metrics that are all the metrics that I need as a long-term investor to justify is a stock overvalued, undervalued, in, in these sorts of things. And I can also listen to conference calls right through it as well. And I can choose a speed. Do I want to, you know, I can type in a ticker symbol, PLTR. I want to listen to Palantir. Okay, boom. I want to listen to a 1.5x speed. Okay, Boom. It's right there for me, right? Absolutely phenomenal. So I've been working on this product for quite a while to, to, you know, behind the scenes and, you know, spend quite a bit of money on it. And I'm really happy and it saves me so much time. It's ridiculous. Like I couldn't have done this stuff before. Like whenever I would do this stuff, it would take me so long. Like, oh, let me compare all these stocks to the forward P. Now let me do the trail into a month P. Oh my gosh. It was so time consuming before. And I've just seamlined, you know, seamlined it all. And it's just so easy now. And, uh, we're also adding a lot of stuff that I don't want to talk about right now, but we're working on it. The devs are working on it in the background. So really phenomenal. So if you're interested in joining the waitlist for this product, www.thousandxstocks.com, you can add yourself to the waitlist there. And um, yeah, pretty exciting. So members, you get your membership card, steal your steel membership card in the mail. And uh, we just started letting some folks in the product. So you get your founder series card in the mail once you join us in there. Number nine of these 17 stocks is Nike. Just do it. So Nike trading about $93 at the moment. Stock looks like it's not that cheap, but it's it's way cheaper than it seems, okay? The reason is they're basically doing a bunch of cost-cutting measures right now that are going through over this next couple quarters that's gonna help this company immensely in the back half of this year and especially in 2025 and beyond. So the Ford P, Trail and 12-month P, it makes it look like, oh, it's not that cheap. It's way cheaper than it seems, in my personal opinion, okay? Now, Nike is obviously a historically a great company, very slow revenue growth expected for this year, like 1%. Uh, and then, but the, the great news is we should see a reacceleration of everything next year for the company. I'm talking revenue growth reacceleration, earnings per share, massive acceleration in earnings per share growth next year. And so I think next year, the company will be seen as a very different company than where it's at right now, where it'll be seen as like, oh, they turned it around. They got everything heading back in the right direction for Nike. Number 10 of these 17 stocks is Cheesecake Factory. Cake. So $33 in some change cent uh, stock right now is cake money. This is cake money. Cheesecake Factory. I mean, the valuation's insane. I mean, you're trading at like half of where more stocks usually trade at in this market. And I don't think people have quite realized that Cheesecake you know, it's a smaller company, right? So it doesn't get seen as much, but I'm consistently watching this company out, outdo their peers consistently in terms of what their comp restaurant sales are versus their peers. I'm watching their margins get better and better. I'm watching them keep expenses in check. I'm watching their opportunity with North Italia and the flower child concept. It sounds like the company's ready to expand that flower child concept uh, much more rapidly in future years. And so I see everything across the board that I absolutely love in this one. I think it's one of the most hidden gem opportunities literally in the entire stock market. I love cake. It's cake money, baby. Give it all to me. And it's a company I don't even worry about. Even in a recession, like they've handled recessions in the past. It's nothing for them. They, they get the job done. Number 11 in these 17 stocks is SoFi. Yes, SoFi. So SoFi is, I would call it a new age bank, basically, right? It's the future. SoFi, GrowFi. So in regards to SoFi, it's a great revenue grower. They continue to attract members, right? Next year, you should see massive earnings per share growth for this company. I think you'll see some in the back half of this year, but next year, you're really going to see explosive earnings per share growth. And right now, it looks like, whoa, really high Ford P. The company just is barely getting to profitability. Like literally, look at the past few quarters. They're just getting to profitability. So we, we're talking about a runway of five, 10 years of, of growing their earnings per share in an epic, epic way. So... I really like SoFi. It's an attractive stock. Seven bucks. Give me some shares. Give me some shares. Next one up here, number 12 of 17, is Whirlpool. Whirlpool. So value stock, dividend stock, looks like a sleepy company, right? I mean, they make washers and dryers and refrigerators, microwaves, dishwashers, all these sorts of things, right? But the thing with Whirlpool is we're going through a pretty historic time right now where like no one's moving, like literally uh, existing home sale numbers are pretty much at the same levels that we witnessed in the great financial crisis, which is pretty insane to think about. Like when you think about how bad the great financial crisis was for housing and you think about existing home sales 
are down at those sorts of numbers right now. That's crazy, crazy. But that's that's the reality. That's what's going on. And so that very negatively affects Whirlpool. Whirlpool needs people moving. People are moving. People are considering getting new appliances. When people aren't moving, they're not considering getting new appliances. They kind of get put on the back burner. Also, when people are tight on money, appliances, you know, they're kind of like, you know, people aren't as, as when they're not feeling good financially or when, you know, they're getting hit by inflation, they're not as likely to go out there and buy a new refrigerator or washer or dryer, those sorts of things. They just get put on the, the back burner, no pun intended. They do make ovens as well, right? So that's kind of what's going on with the company here in the short term. It's an ugly kind of financial situation, but I do believe 2025 and beyond, the situation gets better for Whirlpool. And then it probably gets better for Whirlpool for like literally like five to 10 years. And so I think it's a pretty interesting time to be adding Whirlpool. It's under $100. And so the further it falls, the more I'm going to likely start a position in Whirlpool. Number 13 of 17 is Estee Lauder. So Estee Lauder, one of the best cosmetics companies in the world. In my opinion, they have been dethroned by my other company, which is called Elf Beauty. But they're still one of the best out there, especially in the premium space. Ford P on the stock looks a little hefty. But that's because the company's been going through some rough times on the financial front. They'll get their financial front back together. And if you look at kind of what analyst expectations are here, they expect to get back to revenue growth. They're expected to get back to earnings per share growth. And so they'll likely eat up that forward P over the next few years. So, yeah, Estee Lauder, great long-term company. It's very compelling stock to me. I haven't started a position in it yet, but I... I, I might be inclined to, okay? Number 14 of these 17 stocks is RH, Restoration Hardware, high-end luxury furniture company. You know, they're kind of like a whirlpool in the sense that they need people moving. If people aren't moving, if existing home sales are horrible, RH just has trouble. They, they really do. Because even wealthier people, they're kind of like, oh, I'll just keep the furniture I have right now. Like, I don't need to go get new furniture, Right. It's when people are going to move, that's when people really consider buying new furniture. And so that's what, we're, that's what RH needs. They need existing home sales to pick up. And if existing home sales continue to be down at these kind of numbers that we witnessed back in the great financial crisis, it just makes it brutal for RH. Because basically they're counting on wealthy people to say, you know what, I don't want my couch anymore, let's go get a new couch. You know what, I don't want my dining table anymore, let me get a new dining table for our age. And that's just, a, it's a tougher sell. Then if people are already moving to a new house and they're excited and they're like, oh, we're getting all new furniture for this place. Like when I moved to this house, I got all new furniture. And guess what, it was all from our age, right? And so that's what they need. When people aren't moving, it, it's tough. It's really tough for their business model. And so that's kind of what's going on with our age. But the, these sorts of existing home sale numbers will not last forever, in my personal opinion. Number 15 in these 17 stocks is Mattel. So Mattel, you might know this as a toy company and a licensing company, right? And obviously the Barbie movie came out last year, absolutely massive for Mattel, huge hit, huge kind of boost and excitement for the business model overall. But I don't think it's really been reflected in the stock. You look at the valuation of the company, it hasn't really been reflected. It's an $18 stock. And overall, earnings per share growth over the next few years should be very exciting. Revenue growth, not extremely exciting, but there are the type of numbers that Mattel could come in and beat overall. So sleepy company, but based upon their success with movies and where they could take that, they could kind of become a little bit of a miniature Disney in some sense, right? So Mattel, like it. Number 16 of these 17 stocks is SQQQ. Now, you might say, what? Why is there no information in regards to the stock? Well, SQQQ is basically a 3x leverage against the NASDAQ. So you might say, well, why would you be interested in something like that? You own a bunch of big tech stocks. My biggest investment's Meta, right? Huge in investment of mine's Tesla. Another big investment of mine is, is Amazon, right? And I own several other companies. Well, SQQQ is interesting to me as a hedge. Since it's 3x leveraged against the NASDAQ, if the market goes down in any substantial way in a short amount of time, let's say over a, you know, let's say the, the NASDAQ goes down 10% in a month. Well, ideally, the QQQ should, or SQQQ should go down roughly 30%. It does not work perfectly because it's on a daily basis, but it should be somewhere around there, right? 
which is pretty attractive as a hedge for somebody like myself that owns a lot of tech stocks. So this is something, um, you know, might add a little bit of. It's one of those things, since it's 3x leveraged, I don't need a lot of it to hedge. I don't need a lot of it. I, a little bit goes a long way when it comes to SQQQ, okay? A long way. Number 17 of 17, then we'll get into my ranking system of how I rank these stocks, is Starbucks. So Starbucks is 73 bucks a share here today, forward P down to 17. Keep in mind that it is possible with Starbucks that analysts are too bullish in their earnings per share numbers and their in their revenue numbers. Because Starbucks is in a in a pickle. Okay. They're going through a whole transformation, I think, of they're gonna have to go based upon what I see with Starbucks, they're gonna potentially have to switch CEOs. Howard Schultz might have to consider coming back to the company. Unless they turn around quick, there might be a CEO change, which then there might be a CFO change also, because a lot of times when the CEO gets kicked out, they kick out the CFO. So you might have a whole management turnaround in the next year, and they might have to spend on the business model more, and so that could hurt EPS. So Starbucks could be messy. That's the one warning I'll give in regards to Starbucks. It's, it's intriguing here, but you might be dealing with a lot of drama for the next year. So I'm interested in Starbucks. I might start a position, but it is going to be a drama show for a bit, in my personal opinion. Unless they pull a miracle out of the a rabbit out of the hat, and next thing you know, same sort of sales growth and all these things. I, I just I'm having trouble seeing it right now in, in regards to a quick fix here. I think it's going to be a little longer term, and so that makes Starbucks a messy stock, but an interesting stock nonetheless, right? Now, let me rank these stocks and kind of where, you know, they're at as far as my level of interest in buying these stocks, okay? So Starbucks is the one I'm least interested in. That would be the 17th stock. 16th stock is Mattel. RH is the 15th stock. Estee Lauder, 14th. And SQQQ is 13. Why are these ones way down here and not higher? Well, Somebody's got to be down here first off. Secondly, I just spoke about Starbucks, their troubles. Mattel's interesting, but it doesn't have the great revenue. RH, I, the thing that frustrates me with RH is the, the CEO put the balance sheet in a really bad place because he decided to do an absolutely insane share buyback. And uh, he depleted a lot of that balance sheet cash on this big buyback. And I, you know, I would probably already be buying RH today. If it wasn't for him screwing up that balance sheet as bad as he did. So it makes it a riskier one. That's why it's down here with these. Estee Lauder is down here mainly because I already own such a great company named Elf Beauty. So I'm very interested in it, but it's you know not the highest priority. SQQQ is a hedge. I already have some hedges on in the portfolio, but I might add that one. Then we go to number 12, 11, 10, 9, and 8. We have Zoom, which is down here which is, you know, uh, it's a little bit of a lower revenue growth, uh, revenue company, right? But it's it's a value stock at this point in time. Ubi Boober, right here, 11. Whirlpool's 10. Wind Resort's 9. Cheesecake Factory's 8. Cheesecake Factory would be even higher, but I bought a lot of shares over the past, I would say, six to nine months now at this point in time. So, but yeah, cake, I really, really like cake. EA, Electronics Arts EA is actually, uh, I would put it seven right now. This is, uh, you know, a stock I don't have any position in right now, but I might start a position in it. I, I actually really like EA. I like the way they're positioned. I like the mode around the business model. And so I like that one overall. NCA game coming. Tesla, my Esla is number six. I already have a lot of Tesla shares. I don't think that comes as a, as a surprise to anybody. I've been a shareholder of that company for a long time. Probably, what, six years now at this point in time. So, Yeah. The, that one's there. SoFi, I really like the opportunity of SoFi. It's seven bucks. I think Anthony knows doing a heck of a job running that company. PayPal, I would put that as number four. PayPal, I already own so many shares of PayPal. I bought a lot over this past nine to 12 months. But, you know, I'm now green and positive on my PayPal shares in the public account. And I wouldn't mind adding some more. Fubo's number three. Once again, Fubo is very risky, but man, it's a very tempting risk because there's just not that many times you get that type of that risk reward where it's like, okay, yes, I can lose everything on this one, but it's like that 10x is there. And so it's, it's a tough one, man. It's a tough one. But I would put that as like number three right now. Number two is Shopify. I just love Shopify. I love their balance sheet, their income statement. I love Toby, the guy who's been running that company forever. 
I love where the company's headed. I love the fact that I could buy this company and never have to worry about growth rates and just know they're always going to grow, grow, grow. Ooh, I really like their, their asset like business model overall. I like the fact that the stock's 62 and not 150. So Shopify is very interesting to me. And uh, Nike, Nike's number one right now. This stock I've been adding very aggressively. You don't, it's not very often you can get Nike shares at this sort of pricing where, you know, the stock has gone nowhere for many years. It's, this is a rare opportunity. And I'm just trying to make sure I take advantage of that opportunity in 2024 because I, I don't think this sort of opportunity will come around again in Nike for a long time. And so that's why I'm trying to add that one as aggressively as I possibly can right now. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed this beast of a video here today. Appreciate y'all joining me. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for being subscribed to the channel. Pin comment down there if you're looking to apply to join a private group. Get uh, your game up to a much higher level. It's the highest level group out there when it comes to these very in-depth subjects, hedging strategies, tax strategies, all these sorts of things we cover. I teach everything. I pretty much I teach everything I know. Literally in those course curriculums, you also get access to our exclusive Discord chat as well with uh, not only myself, but just an extraordinary group of, of individuals that have achieved a lot in this world. Much love and have a great day.